Hey idiots, welcome back to Observe. This video is a collaboration between me and my friend Anthony. He is an accomplished memory athlete and has some of the best memory content that I've found on YouTube. That's enough for me though, let's go ahead and hear from Anthony. Have you ever wanted to observe multiple details about a person and be able to recall them later? All of them in crystal clear detail? I'm talking about hair and eye color, clothing, height and behaviors. Maybe even body language and words used by or related to the people you see. For example, not too long ago there was a drunk guy outside of my building hassling some teenagers for cigarettes. At one point this guy followed me into the building and entered the elevator, babbling away with all kinds of private questions about the floor I lived on. I dodged his nosy inquiries and went back down to the lobby instead of getting off at my floor. I continued to observe him bothering the teenagers on the ground floor. A bit later, I had to leave the area but was worried about the young people hanging around our building so I called the cops. A good couple of minutes passed before I was connected with someone and was asked to describe this suspicious individual. By this time I was riding in an Uber and the friends I was with were amazed by how I described this man's widow peak, eye and hair color, all of his clothing and even the brand of the empty cigarette package he had been waving around. Now, I used to work as a store detective, and because observing people to pay my rent during university was exactly what I used to do, remembering and reporting minute details to the police used to be a day in and day out activity for me. Now, although it's been years since I worked undercover, this early work experience while I was paying my way through university made observing people pretty much an autopilot skill. And years later, I learned that how I used to remember multiple details about perpetrators is used in a very similar way by Dr. Gary Small as a memory exercise that helps people struggling to remember. And that's just one reason why I'm so grateful to collaborate with Logan on a video all about observation techniques and how to use them to remember more about the people you see. I believe this simple technique takes Sherlock Holmes-like abilities, not necessarily to the next level but into very practical and useful territory that improves your memory and can even improve how you interact with people in everyday life. My name is Dr. Anthony Metivier and I run the Magnetic Memory Method where our community helps serious learners learn and remember more using the ancient art of memory. Everything from the memory palace or mind palace technique to highly sophisticated techniques for numbers like the major system. But today let's start simple with something called the four details observation exercise. I learned about this exercise from memory expert Dr. Gary Small in his book, Two Weeks to a Younger Brain. It's what some scientists call a passive memory exercise that trains your brain to observe more. I'll give a slightly more sophisticated version in a second that uses active recall instead of passive recall, but this activity is very good for developing your observation skills. Next time you're out walking around, start to think of the people you see in units of four. For example, the head, the chest, the torso, and the feet. Then mentally say gray hair, red sweater, white pants, red shoes, or it might be blonde, ponytail, green hoodie, gray sweatpants, white sneakers. All you're doing is training yourself to observe four details. Then after a few hours, simply reflect and ask yourself, what were the details I observed? This is called passive memory exercise because you're not doing anything to try and remember those details. You're just asking yourself to recall, and this strengthens your ability to reflect and recapture. If you want to test yourself, you can carry a journal and write down your four observations. Don't cheat when testing, however. That defeats the purpose of the exercise. Instead, write down the details you remember on a separate sheet of paper and score your accuracy. Don't judge the results, just observe them. Then, over a few weeks, see how you improve. Now, to make this an active memory exercise, try adding some mnemonics. If you don't know what mnemonics are, they belong to the fascinating world of mentally manipulating information to make it more memorable. In memory science, you might hear it called elaborative encoding. It's a huge topic, but a basic example would be to take the words gray hair and have Jean Grey from the X-Men stories getting angry with the hair of the person you're observing. Then, when you think back to the individual, you're using the sound and alphabetical nature of the word gray to elaborate something much more memorable than just the unspecified notion of gray hair. To take another example for the red sweater, you might take Red Skull, also from the Marvel Universe. Or if you know Red Skelton, you can use him. Or if you're a fan of the band Queen, you could go a bit abstract and use the phrase Ready Freddy from the song Crazy Little Thing Called Love. Two points here. First, you want to make the image dramatic, crazy even. 
So when I suggest that Jean Grey is getting mad, I'm talking about Hulk-like anger. Feel it in your bones. Hear it in your mind's ear. If you have a mind's eye, some of us don't, see it visually. And if you really want to work it deep into your memory, get some tastes and smells involved. For example, is Jean Grey wearing perfume while she's Hulk smashing the gray hair? Did she get even angrier when some of it got into her mouth and she tasted hairspray? Or maybe since you know Logan, who hosts so many great videos on this channel, you're thinking of Wolverine, also known as Logan. Perhaps it's Logan getting mad because the gray hair is trying to flirt with Jean Grey. There are so many options when you start to use these techniques, and it's the depth of multisensory association that makes everything tick in the deepest and most rewarding ways. Now you might be thinking, all of this sounds like a lot of memory activity to be doing when you're observing four different characteristics of a person. You're not wrong, but you can train yourself to make these associations very quickly. In fact, I've sat in a memory competition for playing cards, and although I'm far from the best, I've spent hours in discussion with people who can memorize all 52 cards in less than 20 seconds with 100% accuracy. Myself, I only ever did half as much as Dave Farrell when I competed with him in Canada, but hey, he's got two Guinness World Records for playing cards, and I showed up to the competition with very little practice for cards. But I did have a lot of practice with the four details exercise, and it's pretty much the same process on a card by card basis. Believe me, anyone can handle four details, and these skills pay off in ways you can't imagine, even if you never wind up at a memory competition. The second point to understand is that you're essentially using the person's body as an impromptu memory palace or mind palace. Let me give you a bit of background, just in case you don't know those terms. Both refer to a tool that goes deep into history. Some people think the use of buildings to memorize information started with the Greeks and Simonidas of Kos. But we know from research by Lynn Kelly in The Memory Code and Karen Armstrong in her book on the Buddha that the use of space to help us memorize information is far older than the Greek tradition. All the same, if you're really interested in the topic, please read The Art of Memory by Francis Yates and check out my playlist of videos that I hope helps update some of the information in her important book. Matters of historical interest aside, when you use a memory palace, you're simply placing those elaborated images we talked about in a particular space. So it could be that you place the four details you memorize about a person on or near the four corners of a room. Instead of having Jean Grey getting angry around the area of the person's head, you would have Jean Grey do that in one corner of a memory palace. But of course, why not just use the head of the person as station one of the memory palace? You don't need to transfer it to a building if you're practiced at attaching your mental associations to the body. Using this principle, if you want to remember the red sweater, the chest area is station two, the torso and the legs serve as station three, and the feet as station four. Of course, you're free to start at the feet and work your way up, and if you really get into memory, there will be a lot of personal preferences that arise, and I suggest you simply go with what feels right. Or, if you can't get a feeling for it, study more from memory competitors and nemonists like myself who love these techniques and have thought deeply about them based on solid practice using them. Let's sum up. You've got a passive memory exercise. Dr. Small's research shows that people experience a memory boost simply by observing four details of people and then asking themselves to recall those details later. I've added on to this a process where you can actively encode those four details in a way that exercises your creativity, your spatial memory, and digs into aspects of your episodic and autobiographical memory, sensory memory, etc. This massive workout takes place because you're deliberately using space and then digging around for things that you already know to make associations. Jean Grey the name is a semantic memory and it has episodic memory elements because I know parts of her X-Men story, primarily from the movies. You can, in fact, be prepared in advance by going through the alphabet in its entirety and selecting an image for each and every letter. So, if you see yellow clothing, you'll at least have the choice to think of Yul Brenner or Weird Al Yankovic. Or maybe you'll spontaneously think of a friend named Yan. The point being that the more you prepare images, the faster you can use them. But that doesn't mean you can't also make up images on the fly, or better said, select images from your existing memory pool. The more you practice these skills of observation with association linked to a space in the world, either corners in a room or sections of someone's body, the more the activity itself enters your procedural memory. And that's how, without even thinking about it, you can call the cops like I did and mention everything down to someone's widow peak 
and the kind of empty cigarette package someone is holding in their hand. Now, I mentioned that doing these exercises can improve how you interact with people in everyday life, and there's a few reasons why. First, it's just part of being a good citizen to be more observant and remember more. Neighborhood Watch, if it's in your area, sometimes needs details about incidents, and it's just generally a good practice to be able to recall with a reliable amount of accuracy. Plus, you're much more likely to notice the people in your own life. Having your observation skills and memory grow in strength helps you connect more and more about what you see. And now that you can rapidly encode details about how people look, why not think about how you can memorize body language using these same techniques? If you need more help with your memory for some of the often conceptual and abstract concepts related to body language, just reach out through my channel here on YouTube. And for great info on body language you might want to remember, be sure to check out Logan's excellent suggestions for books on body language next.